It's been nearly 24 hours since a powerful earthquake touched off a huge tsunami that swept across Japan's east coast. Our thoughts and our prayers are with the people of Japan. A warning that radiation levels now are rising at the Fukushima nuclear plant. And there is a high risk, they are saying, of a leak if the situation isn't resolved in the next few hours. Dr. Robert Jacobs is a professor of nuclear history and culture at the Hiroshima Peace Institute. He told us that nuclear power stations are programmed to shut down during major earthquakes. Uh, when a cooling system fails, as apparently happened in one of the Fukushima plants, there should be other systems that, other cooling systems that then kick in. Uh, so in theory, um, this is the kind of safety procedures that will avert any kind of, uh, any kind of event, any kind of nuclear event. But uh, of course, one system can fail and other systems can fail as well. Um, so what happens what the, what the primary danger is, is that uh, these reactors have shut down, so they're no longer generating electricity, but the cores remain very, very hot, and so those cores need to be cooled. And uh, if, the core, if the cooling systems fail, then the temperature of the cores can rise, and that can lead to uh, a variety of different sorts of incidents in which uh, radiation may be released into the environment. In Japan, more troubling nuclear news. This video of a rabbit in Fukushima born without ears went viral this week. It may be cute, but it could also be a danger sign. The rabbit is a genetic mutation born after the nuclear reactor meltdown. Though we should add, whether the deformity is related to the meltdown is still unknown. Even so, the government is now saying the radiation contamination is twice the level they'd previously thought, and they're considering widening the evacuation area nearly three months after the initial disaster. What's going on? To best answer these questions, we've asked back Dr. Michio Kaku, professor of theoretical physics at CUNY, the CUNY system here in New York State, and author of Physics of the Future. Welcome back, Professor. Glad to be on the show. So here's what I don't understand at a very simplistic level. Three months later, they're saying the radiation was twice the levels they had initially announced. Isn't that something that is measured day by day by a thousand different people with Geiger counters? How can you be wrong about something like that? Yes and no. You see, the utility has been lowballing all numbers and also hiding certain aspects of the, of the accident. We physicists have been trying to reconstruct the accident, giving the slivers of information from the utility. Last week, they admitted now three core meltdowns, 100% core melt, this week, they're emitting now twice as much radiation came out than originally thought, 700 trillion becquerels of radiation, about 20% of the radiation that came out of Chernobyl. In my opinion, they were lying. And uh, the, the thickness of your hair. Um, in Tokyo in April, um, measurements indicate that there's about 10 hot particles per day in what a normal person would breathe. and. Uh, it's interesting because in Seattle, uh, it didn't go down that much. It was about five hot particles a day. Um, because most of the time, as we talked about back in April, the, uh, the wind was blowing toward the West Coast. You know, that's why we were warning to uh, wash your lettuce and things like that. Now, what that means is that it's th these hot particles can lodge in your lung or in your digestive tract or your bone and, and over time cause a cancer. But they're way too small to be picked up on a, on a large radiation detector. And so do you believe there are enough of them that people in the West Coast of the United States need to be worried, or is it a, a very minor concern? Well, the average person breathes in about um, uh, 10 cubic meters a day. And uh, the, the filters out there for April show that they were breathing in, in the, per day about five particles. Now, these are charged, which is why we call them fuel fleas, too, and they latch on, on to lung tissue. Um, now, I'm still advising my friends to wash all of your vegetables to make sure you can get it off. Um, but short of that, we're at a point now where uh, you just can't run from the, the particles that are still in the air. Hmm. Well, keep walking. Um, Japan is, by orders of magnitude, many times worse than Chernobyl. Never in my life did I think that six nuclear reactors would be at risk. I knew the three GE engineers who helped design these Mark I GE reactors 
Uh, they resigned because they knew they were dangerous. So Japan built them on an earthquake fault. The reactors uh, partially withstood the earthquake, but the tsunami, but the external electricity supply was cut off, and the external electricity supply supplies the cooling water a million gallons a minute to each of those six reactors. Without the cooling water, the water falls and the rods are so hot they melt, like at Three Mile Island and at Chernobyl. So the emergency diesel generators, which are as large as a house, got destroyed by the tsunami. So there was no way to keep the water circulating in the reactors. Also, on the roofs of the reactors, not within the containment vessel, are cooling pools. Every year they remove about 30 tonnes of the most radioactive rods that you could possibly imagine. Each one is 12 feet long and half an inch thick. It gives out so much radiation, like x-rays, that if you stand next to it for a couple of minutes, you'll die. Not drop dead, but with, remember Litvinenko, <laughs> the Russian who got poisoned by polonium? You'll die like that, with your hair falling out, bleeding to death and dying of massive infection, like AIDS patients die. Um, so these are, th and they're thermally hot, so they have to be put in a big pool and continually cooled to. The pool has really no roof. There have been three hydrogen explosions blowing off the roof of the, of the building, not the containment vessel of the core, but the roof, and exposing the cooling pool. Two of the cooling pools are dry. They have no water in them, meaning that the nuclear fuel rods are, are covered with a material called zirconium. When zirconium is exposed to air, it burns, it ignites. And there have been two of the fueling pools at this moment are burning. In the fueling, the cooling pools are many times, you know, like uh, 10 to 20 times more radiation than in each reactor core. In each reactor core is as much long-lived radiation as that produced by a thousand Hiroshima-sized bombs. We are dealing with diabolical energy. E equals mc squared. It's the energy that blows up nuclear bombs. Einstein said nuclear power is a hell of a way to boil water because that is all nuclear power is used for, to boil water, through the massive heat, turn it into steam, turn a turbine which generates electricity. Now when you fish in uranium, 200 new elements have formed, all of which are much more poisonous to the body than the original uranium. Although uranium is pretty poisonous, America used it in Fallujah and Baghdad and in Fallujah, 80% of the babies being born are grossly deformed. They're being born without brains, single eyes, no arms. The doctors have told the women to stop having babies. The incidence of childhood cancer has gone up about 12 times. This is genocide. It's a nuclear war being conducted in Iraq. But uranium that they're using lasts for more than 4.5 billion years. So we're contaminating the cradle of civilization the coalition of the willing. In the nuclear power plants, however, is a huge amount of radiation, 200 elements. Some last seconds, some last millions of years. Radioactive iodine lasts six weeks. It causes thyroid cancer. That's why people are saying, better take potassium iodide, because that blocks the thyroid uptake of radioactive iodine, which later can cause thyroid cancer. In Chernobyl, over 20,000 people have developed thyroid cancer. They have to have their thyroids out and they will die unless they take thyroid replacement every day like a diabetic has to take insulin. Strontium-90 will get out. It lasts for 600 years. It goes to the bone where it causes bone cancer or leukemia. Cesium lasts for 600 years. It's all over Europe. 40% of Europe is still radioactive. Turkish food is extremely radioactive. Do not buy Turkish dried apricots. Do not buy Turkish hazelnuts or dried 
uh, the Turks were so cross with the Russians, they sent all their radioactive tea over to Russia after Chernobyl. But 40% of Europe is still radioactive. Farms in Britain, their lands are so full of cesium they can't sell them. Don't eat European food. But that's nothing compared to what's happening now. One of the most deadly is plutonium, named after Pluto, god of the underworld. One millionth of a gram, if you inhale it, will give you cancer. Hypothetically, one pound, if evenly distributed, could give everyone on Earth cancer. Each reactor has 250 kilos of plutonium in it, kilograms. You only need 2.5 kilograms to make a bomb because plutonium is what they make bombs with. So any country that has a reactor, from your uranium, you are the biggest exporters of uranium in the world, Cameco. Canada sells two things. It sells wheat for life and uranium for death. Right? Plutonium is going to get out and spread all over the Northern Hemisphere, and it's already heading towards North America now, plus radioactive iodine-129, its half-life is 17 million years, plus strontium, plus cesium, plus tritium, and I could go on and on and on. When it rains, down comes fallout, and it concentrates in food. If it gets into the sea, the algae concentrated hundreds of times, then the crustaceans concentrated hundreds of times, then the little fish, then the big fish, then us. Because we stand on the apex of the food chain. You can't taste these radioactive elements, you can't see them, and you can't smell them. They're silent. When you get them inside your body, you don't suddenly drop dead of cancer. It takes five to 60 years to get your cancer. And when a cancer, if you feel a lump in your breast, it doesn't say, I was made by some strontium-90 you ate in a piece of fish 20 years ago. All radiation is damaging. It's cumulative. Each dose you get adds to your risk of getting cancer. With americium, that's more dangerous than plutonium. I mean, I could go on and on. Depends if it rains, if you're going to get it or not. Um, if the, it rains and the radiation comes down, don't grow food, don't eat the food, and I mean don't eat it for 600 years. The radioactive waste from nuclear power is going to be buried, I, I hear, just like le next to Lake Ontario. It's going to leak, last for millions of years, it's going to get into the water, into the food chains. Radioactive waste will induce epidemics of cancer, leukemia, and genetic disease for the rest of time. This is the greatest public health hazard the world has ever witnessed apart from the threat every day of nuclear war. Einstein said the splitting of the atom changed everything save man's mode of thinking. Very profound. Thus we drift towards unparalleled catastrophe. We are arrogant, we have a lot of hubris, and I think the reptilian midbrain of some men's brains is pathological. We are now in a situation where we have harnessed the energy of the sun. It is totally out of control and there's simply nothing we can do about it.